Cat's Cradle is a science fiction novel and the great whiz-bang science fiction device in the middle of it is a form of frozen water which is stable at room temperature. And if this sort of substance ever got loose on the earth, it would teach all water how to freeze in that way. And the water on the face of the earth would vanish. This novel, too, was inspired by uh, General Electric, by science at General Electric. In those days, it was quite conventional for research scientists to be indifferent about what became of their discoveries, as they were interested only in truth. And I think that uh, the government was very interested in having our scientists feel that they were in no way associated with weapons, and so they would uh, continue to conduct research cheerfully. Uh, I worked there as a publicity man with Irving Langmuir, who uh, uh, was a Nobel Prize winning physicist. He was the only one in private industry in those days, and he was maddeningly absent-minded, and it seemed wrong to me in view of, of uh, some of his discoveries that he should be so indifferent to what became of him. So this dreadful substance, which is discovered by a man who is purely interested in truth, finally winds up in the hands of a dictator, and not to leave you in suspense, the world ends. I opened my eyes, and all the sea was ice nine. The earth was locked up tight. It was winter, now and forever. Hello, hello, I called through the palace ruins. The awesome winds had torn canyons through the great stone pile. The arch of the palace gate was the only man-made form untouched. Written at its base was a calypso. Someday, someday, this crazy world will have to end and our God will take things back that he to us did lend. And if on that sad day you want to scold our God, why go right ahead and scold him. He'll just smile and nod. As I was born in 1922, and then I had a father and a brother who believed strongly in technology that the world was going to be remade. And I was an enthusiast for this, too, and I wrote one time that I expected uh, that by the time I was 30, that Popular Mechanics magazine would have a color photograph of God on its cover. <laughs> Science would have cornered God and, and got him to agree to oppose and, and to answer any questions they might still have. And uh, I was a great believer in truth, scientific truth, and then as I wrote once, as, then truth was dropped on Hiroshima. And uh, so I, I was hideously disillusioned, as that is when I lost my innocence, really, is when the bomb was dropped on Hiroshima, and I was with my scientist brother when the news came, is when we picked up the newspaper. I, I, I had come home from the war in Europe and uh, was at home on a furlough, and here the newspaper told about the atom bomb. And my brother knew exactly what this thing was, and that this was not uh, uh, just uh, uh, anything like gunpowder or dynamite or TNT, that this was a new order of destruction. And uh, I mean, people now, as ordinary citizens, only now are realizing how destructive these weapons are, and that they are, in fact, a new order of violence. I am embarrassed. We are all embarrassed. We Americans have guided our destiny so clumsily, with all the world watching, that we must now protect ourselves against our own government and our own industries. We have discovered a brand new method for committing suicide. What is the method? to say nothing and do nothing about what some of our businessmen and military men are doing with the most unstable substances and the most persistent poisons to be found 
anywhere in the universe. The lies we have been fed about nuclear energy have been as cunningly handcrafted as the masterpieces of Benvenuto Cellini. If we let them, they will kill everything on this lovely blue-green planet with their rebuttals to what we say here today, with their vicious, stupid lies. Unconscious child with a head cut. This is St. Vincent 61. Go ahead. We're transporting an 11-year-old female patient. I have now seen with my own eyes what a neutron bomb can do to a city. The official story is that an American truck was transporting this American bomb on the interstate and the bomb went off. There was this flash. It was an accident, supposedly. The truck, if there really was a truck, seems to have been right opposite the New Holiday Inn when the bomb went off. But most of the structures are still left standing and furnished. I am told that every one of the television sets in the New Holiday Inn is still fully operable. We were a party of four. Ketchum's wife and Felix's wife had declined to come along. They were afraid of radioactivity. We were unable to persuade those superstitious souls that the whole beauty of a neutron bomb explosion was that there was no lingering radiation afterwards. Felix and I had run into the same sort of ignorance when it was time to bury mother next to father in Calvary Cemetery. People refused to believe that she herself wasn't radioactive. They were sure that she would make all the other bodies glow in the dark and that she would seep into the water supply and so on. And I do not see how I can get out of asking this question. Does it matter to anyone or anything that all those peepholes were closed so suddenly? Since all the property is undamaged, has the world lost anything it loved? What is the purpose of life? Trout plundered his pockets for a pen or pencil. He had an answer to the question but he had nothing to write with. The purpose of life? To be the eyes and ears and conscience of the creator of the universe. You fool! 